I'm sure you've experienced a really frustrating library search before. You've probably typed in the keywords you thought that would work and nothing comes up. I don't, you don't understand why you can't find anything. The problem is that you can't just sit down in a library database and expect to find things off the cuff. You have to have a pre-planned search strategy. So this video is going to give you some examples of search strategies to help maximize your search so you can work smarter, not harder. Before we get into the search strategy, though, I do want to call your attention to a distinction between primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are articles that provide details of research studies, which were written by the researchers who actually did the research study. So they do the study, then they write the manuscript and get it published about that particular study. A secondary source, however, is the summaries of studies that other people did. So I could actually go out and write some summaries about studies that other researchers did and publish that. That's considered a secondary source because I was not the researcher who did the study. So this is an example of a primary source study. Lou and colleagues were the ones who actually did this study. And then they wrote up the manuscript and got it published in the Journal of Nursing Research. So that's a primary source um, resource. This is a literature review. Therefore, Maleka and colleagues did not do the studies that are looked at in this, in this publication. This publication reviewed 11 different studies. Maleka did not do all 11 of those studies. They simply looked at um, articles or studies that others had done and compiled it all together in a secondary source work. So we have to be careful. A good indication that you're looking at a secondary source is when you see a table like this in your article. This article is showing you all of the, the individual studies that Maleka and colleagues looked at when they did their literature search. So if you see a table like this, you know you're looking at a secondary source usually. So when we're looking for primary sources or secondary sources, we are do going to want to look in a bibliographic database, a library database like CINAHL, PubMed, things like that. And we're going to do a search for um, research. So what we're wanting to do is to find evidence, good quality evidence that actually answers our PO or PICO question. So we have to have that question developed first to provide the roadmap to let us know what exactly we're searching for, because we want to find sources that are high quality that actually provide an answer to the question we've done before. Now, this slide shows you a few example ways that you can do a search strategy. The ancestry and the descendancy approaches can be helpful especially if you found some articles already that look good. What these do is that an ancestry approach, you actually comb through the reference section of another publication you've looked at. So for instance, I just found an article that was really good. It was published in 2019 and it's exactly what I'm looking for. What I can do is at the back of that article, there's usually a reference section and it goes through all of the resources those researchers used to compose that article. So the odds are something in that reference list is going to be similar to what I'm looking for. If it's a pretty recent publication, then we might be able to find recent articles in that database bibliography that can we can then find. It kind of helps save some time. Um, the descendancy approach is the opposite. We're looking forward into the future. So if you found an article that was from 2010 and it was really good, but it's kind of old, we can actually use the articles that have cited that study more recently and see if they might be something useful for our evidence-based practice uh, review. Um, another tool for searching that I want to mention is called truncation or the use of wildcard characters. Um, sometimes Searching is trial and error. I'm not going to lie. You have to kind of play with the keywords that you enter until you figure out what's going to work best for you. But sometimes we can use these wild cards um, and keep them um, to give us a better um, output for our search. So you can see my a couple of examples. For um, nurse, if I do N-U-R-S with an asterisk, a wild card, 
um, then that's actually doing a search for nurse, nurses, nursing. So anything that starts with N-U-R-S and has any suffix or ending to the end of that word, it would pull up. Another good example, diab, D-I-A-B asterisk. That's looking at diabetes, diabetic. So you can definitely see how that can be helpful depending on your topic and depending on the types of words that you would want to be looking up. Um, another important thing that you need to understand before you get into databases is um, Boolean operators. This is kind of the language that search engines use when they're in the library databases. So you can use it to your advantage by actually speaking the language that the programs use to find exactly what you're looking for. I would say that the two you're probably going to use more often would be AND and OR. However, NOT can certainly be helpful in certain circumstances. When I show you my example search in a little bit, you'll see how I use these Boolean operators to tie together words. So, and if I use the, the phrase obesity and diabetes, that means that I'm looking for articles or resources that have to talk about both obesity and diabetes. So that is a limiter. It's going to limit it because you have to have both of those or it's not even going to kick that into my search reference list or expands your search. So if I do obesity or diabetes, it's going to find all of the references that talk about obesity and all of the references that talk about diabetes, but they don't necessarily have to talk about both of them. Okay. So if you want both, you put and. If you want either or, you put or. In the op, sometimes not can be helpful, especially if you're wanting to find specific populations or screen out specific populations. So for instance, if you're wanting to look at adult diabetes, you could type in obesity and diabetes, not children or not pediatric. And that way it's not going to pull up things that have that word as its heading. Um, so what you're wanting to do, you've already um, developed your PICO or PO question. So you, now you have to take that question and try to brainstorm what kind of keywords you could use to do your search. So I put an example PICO question here. In cancer patients, what are the effects of music therapy in comparison to pharmacologic pain treatment on pain management? So I can see my patients are cancer patients, my population. My intervention is music therapy, comparison pharmacologic treatments, and my outcome is pain management. So I highly recommend a brainstorming table. Like you can just do this on a scratch sheet of paper to see what kind of keywords you might want to use. And that's what I did here at the top. So I did my columns, population, intervention, comparison, and outcome. And I kind of brainstormed all of the different words that could be used to describe that particular phenomenon. So for example, patient, I want my population's cancer patients. I don't necessarily want to say cancer patients. The tighter and cleaner you can make it, the better. So I did cancer, oncology. I used my asterisks, so that could look up onco oncologic, oncological, all kinds of different things, and neoplasm, which is obviously another name for a tumor, so it's associated with cancers. For intervention, I did music therapy, music intervention. Comparison, I wrote, listed a couple of things in my brainstorming session. And then for my outcome, I put pain management, pain control, or just plain pain, because I don't really know how authors have listed these as far as keywords go. You got to think of it like a filing cabinet. I don't know which exact filing cabinet the articles are going to be filed in. So the more options I give myself, the better chance I am at finding exactly what I need. So then I did a sample search. Very rarely are you going to do type in the first thing that comes to your mind and find exactly what you want. So you kind of need to go in with a pre-plan like I did here. So I did my table and then I actually linked all of these together to do little individual searches. And you're going to have to do this on one of your assignments. So I gave you an example here. I first, my very first search, I typed in all of my population options and I linked them together with or. So cancer, or oncology, or oncolog, or neoplasm. And I put my little truncator in there. 
just to see what I got. How many hits did I get? And with that search, I got almost 600,000 hits. Do you need to sit and read all those? Absolutely not. It's just giving you an idea of what's out there. So I had roughly 589,000 hits on my population alone. So then I searched my intervention alone, music therapy or music intervention, and got almost 7,000 hits. Same thing, my third search was on my comparators. So all those words that I brainstormed, I linked together with or, and I got a lot, 615 plus thousand, 100,000, excuse me. My fourth search was my outcome words linked together with or, the Boolean operator, and I got 265,000 plus searches. My last search was linking them all together, and this is where you're going to hit bingo this is perfect so i don't want to move my mouse around because then it'll cover it up but you can see what i did is i took all of those first four searches and i linked them together with and so every word that i typed in on search one i put them within parentheses i'm kind of pointing to the screen but try not to move my mouse so i put cancer or oncology or oncolog or neoplasm all in parentheses then i did and my linking boolean operator then I did my interventions, all in parentheses, and comparators, and outcomes. And when I did that, I got 45 articles. So those 45 things that pulled up should be very particularly linked to my PICO question because I specifically told it exactly what I'm looking for. And so then you would go through all 45 of those articles' titles, read them. Do these look okay? You know, just because you searched smart does not mean every article that comes up is going to be ideal, but it's a whole lot better to look at 45 articles than it is to look at 589,000 articles, 100,000. So just when you learn how to speak the language of the databases, you can have a much better search. And this might have only come up with three. If it came up with three, then I need to go back to the drawing board. It is trial and error. But when you learn how to kind of brainstorm and pre-plan it before you even get into the databases, your odds of having a good search go up exponentially. So hopefully this has been helpful and you'll have much better uh, success with your searches.